Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I own a valuation company in St. Louis, Missouri. I have the privilege of discussing nonprofit organizations, accounting, strategic planning, and management today with Tasha Anderson, a CPA and nonprofit accounting expert in St. Louis, Missouri. What is a nonprofit organization? And is it the same as a nonprofit foundation or association, or are we getting them all confused? So I think in a very basic way, we can describe a nonprofit organization as a designation that the state or the feds will give you. It's a type of business. Uh, and I like to joke that nonprofit is a tax status, not a business model, but that's really what it is. It's really just a tax status, much like you might consider a C corporation or an S corporation, a partnership, a sole proprietor. And underneath the title of nonprofit organization, you will actually have different types of businesses, including foundations, associations, or what a lot of people think about nonprofit organizations are those that fall under the 501c3 that are public charity. But you might also underneath that have different things that um, you might not think about. So for example, churches or houses of worship could technically be a 501c3. So that is technically a nonprofit. But the words get a little bit confusing. Uh, but ultimately, a nonprofit organization is really just a tax status and a designation. And underneath that, you're going to have different types of organizations depending on what the purpose or operations um, of your organization and what specifically it does. The IRS has different designations for different types of missions. And so I think that some people, when they think of nonprofits, they don't necessarily understand the concept. So the, because they're like, well, some of these nonprofits are actually making money. So isn't that a profit organization? And so can you help us kind of, you know, these nonprofits are getting money, mm -hmm. but it, what does that really mean in that space? I get that question a lot. A, a lot of times from donors, should they be making a profit or have surpluses at the end of the year? And also from founders or CEOs of a nonprofit, how much profit should I be able to make? How much should I be able to retain? And frankly, especially now uh, in this economic uncertainty, many of my clients have fared, I would say, better than other types of small businesses, for example, restaurants, because they are encouraged and it is best practices to operate at least for a period of time with a surplus to build what we call a reserve. So in the absence of surpluses or profits, we don't accumulate a savings, which is just like any other business or you know your personal income. If you spend more than you take in, you're never going to be able to save. And if you don't save, then you can't weather economic hardships like a loss of a significant contract, a uh, loss of a particular donor, um, additional increases in expenses that maybe you didn't plan for. And in most cases, most charity watchdogs, including the Better Business Bureau, um, Charity Navigator, or even funders like United Way have set best practice standards to say a minimum of 25% of their operations. So if they're at a million dollar organization, they should have $250,000 sitting in a reserve or savings account to weather some of those uncertainties. And without a surplus, this is what I tell people, without a surplus, you're never going to be able to do that. And interestingly, um, I have did an entire analysis earlier this year in response to some of the economic volatility uh, with either the stock market or just in general. And most of my clients, I had about 65 clients at the time, and I think all but 10 had an excess of 90 days of cash. And frankly, I don't know that many small businesses that operate in that way. And although we did experience hardships with loss of funding or the volatility with the stock market for those organizations that have investments, but because they had that savings account, they were able to retain staff they were able to continue programming in spite of temporary losses and funding, which which has been really great. Which has been a really important piece of this, you know, going through this kind of economic cycle, if you will.